the vicious trolls that populate the numerous jungle isles of the South Seas are renowned for their cruelty and dark mysticism. Barbarous and superstitious, they carry a seething hatred for all other races. Long since exiled from its ancestral homeland in Stranglethorn Vale, the Dark Spear tribe was nearly destroyed by rampaging Murlocs. Rescued by the young war chief Thrall and his orcish warriors, the Darkspear tribe swore allegiance to the Horde. Led by the cunning shadow hunter Vol'jin, the Darkspears now make their home in Duratar, along with their orcish allies. As one of the only surviving Darkspears, it falls to you to reclaim the glory of your tribe. Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome to World of Warcraft, the Burning Crusade Classic, and our Troll Shaman playthrough. This is the beginning of our Troll Shaman playthrough. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for clicking on the video. I really do appreciate it. A little bit about me, I've played World of Warcraft for the last 17 or so years, and I play the game a little bit differently than you might have seen other people playing it on the internet. And that is, I tend to get immersed in the lore, in the story, I keep the music up and the ambience up, I read most if not all of the quests and lore objects, and I just try to make sure that we can just have a fun, relaxing time in the world that we all love. So I hope you are into that. Uh, if you are, if that sounds good to you, just stick around, consider leaving a like on the video Watch if you do like it, and consider subscribing to the channel. Let's go ahead and talk about a few things here. So we're using Immersion, which is a mod that takes the quest box and splits it up into manageable little dialogue bits, and it's really helpful. Uh, it makes the quest text easier to read, both in the font and in the breaking up of the paragraphs. Objectives are broken out neatly below, if that's all that you're interested in, in reading. Uh, I've set up an Immersion Mode tab here, and the purpose of this is that we're not going to see any chat scroll. So that's going to help us kind of get into things. It's not going to be constantly drawing your eye over to the side with uh, people's nonsense in either trade or whatever. So all we're going to see over there is uh, some skill ups for professions. We're going to see item loot and we're going to see system messages over there. So yeah, beyond that, we're using Questy. So that's going to allow us to track our quest on the mini map. It's going to show us where quests are at. That's the most useful thing that I found it to be used for, is just pointing me towards those out-of-the-way quests, the little hidden gems that you might otherwise never experience. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into things here. Finally, you are of age, of age to battle in the name of the Horde, to conquer for the glory of the Warchief. You will do nicely. No doubt you wish to find a great dragon or demon and strangle it with your bare hands. But perhaps it would be wise to start on something less dangerous. Report to Gornak, he should be able to assign you a task better suited to a young shaman. Go forth to victory. And yeah, for the shaman class, I have played on an alliance shaman really recently. Fell in love with the class. To me, it's been described best as being like a magical warrior, and that's kind of how I intend to play it. But it turns out that I, I don't do really well on the Alliance side. I don't like the Draenei um, very much, even though I've tried to give them a shot several times with a few characters. They just kind of break uh, the immersion for me. So here we are on a Shaman on the Horde side, and I think this is going to turn out a lot better for us. See, the Valley of Trials will temper even the weakest into a warrior worthy to join the Horde. Those who cannot rise to its test will be left to bake in the scorching desert sun. Another one of Kaltunk's recruits, hmm? A sorry state of affairs we find ourselves in if this is the best the Horde can produce. No matter, by the time we think you're ready to leave the Valley, you'll be a proud warrior of the Horde. The first order of business will be to put a little strength in your backbone. I could send you out into the barrens to hunt Kodo, but, well, in all honesty, you're more useful to us alive than dead. I believe you would find a good match with the mottled boars to the north of here. Strength. But yeah, when it comes to questing on the Alliance side of things, like I'm not as familiar and I, I don't really enjoy the flow that you take from zone to zone after about level 30. I really enjoy Elwyn, 
and Westfall, Red Ridge, and Duskwood. And after that, um, I, I'm less and less familiar with the questing areas, and I just don't enjoy the flow of questing on the Alliance as much. Uh, coupled with the fact that uh, I just don't really care for the visuals of the Draenei, it kind of breaks the immersion for me. So when we're in places like Duskwood and Red Ridge, and I'm looking at a blue space alien, I, I understand their place in the lore, I accept it. But for some reason, looking at them while I play the game, it does kind of break immersion for me. So we tried it on a mage, we tried it on a shaman, and the good thing is we found that uh, I, I love the shaman class. It's incredibly fun. I like to be up close and personal with enemies in the game. I like to fight in melee for the most part. Uh, that's why the warrior is my favorite class. And what the Shaman allows is the Shaman going enhancement spec allows us to be that melee fighter, but also gives us tons of spells and tons of utility that a warrior just doesn't have. So we get to be a, a magical user while being in melee where I kind of like to be. So that's the big draw to me. I do plan to level the character as enhancement, but we will be tanking. We will be tanking. We could tank. <laughs> We will be healing dungeons, so I'll be keeping an extra set of gear with some intellect on it so that we can heal up the, the leveling dungeons as we go. We want to keep ourselves in pretty good gear. Uh, like most melee classes, I feel like the Enhancement Shaman is pretty gear dependent, so we want to keep our weapons and armor in a good spot. That was another problem that I was having on the Alliance side, is that, quite frankly, they don't have the easy access to low-level dungeons that the Horde does. They don't have easy access to Shadowfang Keep, they don't have easy access to Wailing Caverns, they can't do Rage Fire basically at all. Um, Scarlet Monastery, another place that they don't really have easy access to that you really want to farm for some melee weapons and some, some mail gear. But yeah, uh, so I think we're going to have a better time on the Shaman on the faction that I enjoy most. There's so many places that I love to quest on the Horde side, and for me the Alliance side is just some... It's a big unfamiliarity, you know. But one of the things I learned about myself, have been learning about myself recently, is that I, I don't enjoy playing straight casters in World of Warcraft. And I thought that was confined to the mage. And then when I dusted off my priest, and they were shadow spec, and we played for a while in Outland, I kind of realized that I didn't like that either. Uh, the other day I tried playing on a warlock, I tried starting up a warlock, both on, as a blood elf and as a forsaken. Just to rule out the race being the reason why I was bouncing off of it, and yeah, I still just did not enjoy it. Uh, I don't really enjoy just blasting away from range, it turns out. And yeah, it's a good thing to know about myself now, uh, is that I do need to be on something that can be in melee range a lot of the time. And that's what the Enhancement Shaman is going to allow us to do. We're going to get to have those magical powers, get to have the totems for their utility. Uh, we're going to get to be a healer when we want to be. But when we want to be up close and personal with enemies, we are going to be doing that. Uh, let's come back here. We'll turn this into Gornek first. What do you need? Uh, we're going to take the leather. Rune inscribed tablet is going to take us to our class trainer. Victory. And Sting of the Scorpid. Powerful warrior and awkward novice alike have fallen to the venomous sting of the Scorpid. You'll find large numbers of Scorpids northwest of here. Bring me ten of their tails as proof of your prowess in battle. Strength. What can I do for you? What do you need? Farewell. All right, let's see. I think we're going to get yeah, rockbiter weapon, but we're going to need some actual money. So let's come over here. We will pick up the quest for cactus apples. He wants to make us a cactus apple surprise. Doesn't that sound delicious? And he needs 10 cactus apples to do that. Speak, friend. Let's equip the new gloves we got. We can equip this back piece as well just to have something on. Leather boots. Uh, that should be good. We could sell the rest. Be safe. 
And then maybe we can afford rock biter weapon. Greetings. Go forth to victory. So rock biter weapon is going to imbue our weapon, increasing its damage per second by two. It's going to last for 30 minutes, so we can just have it over here. And we will talk to uh, Zaretha here. Strength and honor. Vile familiars, I trust the Valley of Trials will teach you much, young shaman. I was sent to the valley to guide you, but I have discovered a growing taint here. A group that calls itself the Burning Blade has a coven here in the Valley of Trials. They are skulking in a cave to the northeast, and their vile familiars have spilled from its mouth to cause havoc. As your first task against the Burning Blade, I bid you defeat these familiars, slay many, and if you survive, return to me. Alright, that is everything for now. This guy has a quest to wake up peons, but he's not quite ready for us yet. Maybe level 4 we'll get it. Let's start looking for the cactus apples here. I think we'll head out and we'll take on the scorpions first, maybe? Let's see. Well, maybe we'll just head up here, we'll fight the familiars. And then we should be at least level 3, we can then head out to the east and fight the scorpions. And there should be a quest over there for us to pick up as well, to fight a named scorpion. Yeah, uh, there are some scorpions over here we could deal with too. Uh, but we'll, we'll mainly focus on the vile familiars over here. Uh, we haven't picked up any shields yet, unfortunately. It would be really nice if we can get a shield to drop, just like any junk shield. And also, it would be really good if we can get a bag to drop. Yeah, that would be really nice. As far as like what leveling track we're going to take, I think being a shaman, we're going to have to kind of stick in and around the barrens for a while. At least through level 10, uh, because we'll want to be able to get our fire totem quest. 
Otherwise, I'd probably take us out to Eversong Woods. Oh, maybe we'll go to Eversong Woods anyway, but I think that would be more around level 10. So basically, maybe we'll try to plan for... We'll get our Fire Totem whenever we get that, as soon as we can get it. And once we do that, maybe we'll head out... Uh, I'll take us over to Eversong Woods. The only problem I can see in that, honestly... Is that if they don't have a shaman trainer in either Silver Moon or Undercity, then it's gonna be hard for us to keep current on our skills without like a bunch of travel. But I feel like they have to at least have one in the Undercity, right? I'll do a little bit of research, but yeah, maybe we go to Eversong Woods at level at level ten, eleven. Just that the rewards over there are gonna be better. The quest tracks are gonna be more efficient. And I want to do I want to do a full Silver Pine run this time around, so we'll be alternating between Silver Pine and probably Ghostlands, because I would like to do a a full Silver Pine run with Questy. That's level 3. We don't need to fight all of these scorpions here. I mean, we can. It's not really a big deal. We're still going to have to run out to the to the east anyway to get the quest from the guy out there under the tree. But since they're non-aggressive anyway, it doesn't really matter. I do want to be finding some more familiars though because we do need 12 of these guys. I do enjoy the troll casting animation for Lightning Bolt at least, it's pretty good. I don't know though, maybe, maybe I won't do, maybe I won't do Ghostlands this time around. Maybe we can do like a Baron's Silver Pine split. I feel like the Baron's is one of the places that I just have never done a ton of questing. I think we, we always set out to do some questing in the Baron's and then I end up going elsewhere. That's kind of what happened I think when we took the Warrior to the Baron's. We did a little bit, but I think eventually I did take the Warrior over into Eversong Woods and got him into Ghostlands. It's so hard not to do that, just because a lot of the quest rewards are better over there, but if we're able to heal dungeons and run some dungeons and we're getting gear from that, then there's not as strong of, a, of an impetus to go into Ghostlands and do all that content again. So, we'll see. We have some time to figure it out. I I'm at least going to stick around here until we've got our fire totem and that's squared away.
Uh, we still do need a couple of familiars. Yeah, let's let's get our last two before we run off in any direction here. I'm not really sure what, if any, professions for the character yet. I haven't really thought that far ahead. Obviously, it's easy to say, like, skinning, leatherworking. I feel like every character I have is a skinner. I'm kind of okay with that. It's, it's kind of painful, actually, to, like, kill something that could be skinned, and then you just have to leave it on the ground when you're not a skinner. Okay, well, we've got an inventory problem. We've got two shields here as well. We're going to take the big shield and equip it. We take that for loot. Uh, which still leaves us with a big inventory issue. Okay, well that's fine. We're probably in a place where maybe we could head back. Um, I'd like to get level 4. And then head back. So that we could train our level 4 abilities. Which I'm pretty sure is going to be Earthshock. So that's what I would that's what I would like to do. Are we going to get that though? Are we going to get level four from what we currently have? I don't think so. Let's try to get the rest of these Scorpid Stingers. We might have to go back anyway just to sell stuff. I don't really want to be walking around with a full inventory right now. That's not great. Alright, well, we have all three of these completed. Is it going to be enough? Maybe not. Maybe we should fight some additional stuff here on the way back. Yeah, it just is painful to fight stuff and have a full inventory at the same time. Let's go turn it all in and just see how much experience it's worth and we'll go from there. It looks like we'll be able to pick up the Lazy Peon quest now though, that's good. We can get that done when we go back out uh, to the east, or to the west rather. Cursed peons, they work hard gathering lumber from the trees of the valley, but they're always taking naps. I need someone to help keep the peons in line. May your blades never Inventory die. full. Yeah, we need to carry his beating stick. Speak, friend. Alright. Yep, let's go get these turned in and see where that leaves us. We'll sell also. Like, right away we're gonna sell. Yeah, I think we are going to get level 4 here, actually. We'll take the one-handed club. Through my divinations, I see that an item of power hides deep within the Burning Blade Coven, guarded by beast and black magic. It is called the Burning Blade Medallion, and your next task, your next task is to find it and remove it from the coven. 
But be wary, for the medallion may be possessed by an agent of the Burning Blade, and if so, then the agent's power would be greater than the familiars you have already encountered. You will find the coven in a cave to the northwest. Yep, we know where it is. Okay, cool. So we did hit level 4. Let's talk to, Glory to the horde. you. will teach us Earthshock. Go with honor. Which we'll put there. Who you be? And then we get the call of Earth. The time is now, young shaman. You've grown strong and your spirit endures like the Earth. Following the shaman's path shows you have wisdom before even proving yourself. The element of Earth will guide you to your destiny, becoming part of you if you are ready. But you must stand before the Earth itself. If you are ready, then you will see things only Shaman know of. Later. Okay. Blood and thunder. Uh, we'll take the back. Let's come over here and sell what we don't need before we head out. All right, now we will go around waking peons up. We need some Thalstalker hooves from uh, from inside the cave where we're going to find the Burning Blade Medallion. This guy is not napping right now, unfortunately. Let's, let's, get, let's give him a second. Maybe he'll fall asleep. No, he's he's hard at work. Ah, uh, there's one over here sleeping. Ah, uh, he woke up. <laughs> That's gonna be how the quest goes. I see, I see. Well, that's going to be kind of a pain. I can do that. Perfect, he just went to sleep. Be busy. Leave me alone, okay? hmm. It's weird how they talk when you click on them, even when they are asleep. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. We're gonna have to fight some of these guys to make our way in here. So Earthshock is also an interrupt, we can just hold off on it until he starts casting again, if he casts again, which he might not. Rockbiter weapon has worn off, it'd be a great idea to have that up.
can't remember the trick for navigating this place. I think maybe we stay to the right. Yeah, let's try staying to the right. There's the other Fellstalker hoof we need, so now we're just looking for the Burning Blade Medallion. You know what, we're also gonna get a quest to come back in here though. Yeah. Let's not, let's not go in here right now. We're gonna get a quest to come back in to get Therzel's pick. After we have woken up all the peons, he's gonna have a follow-up for us. And we'll have to go in here then. I don't wanna have to fight my way back into this place twice. So we got our first part of the Earth Totem quest. Let's go wake up the rest of the peons, we'll head out to the west, and we'll find the guy under the tree who wants us to kill the name Scorpion. And we will hold off on going into the cave until we have all the quests to go into the cave. Of course he woke up right as we were about to get our last peon. Here's another one up here, maybe he'll stay asleep. Sleep, sleep. Shaman. I thought I would die out here with none to know of it. While I was hunting the scorpions of the valley, I came across a particularly vicious looking one. Hurling myself at it, I managed to inflict a massive blow to its claw before it closed around my leg. I wasn't ready for the stinger though, and it sliced down into my chest, cutting into my flesh and letting my blood. Please, you must kill the scorpion for me. My honor must be upheld. I fought it on the plateau to the south. You'd think he'd want us to, like, bind his wound, get him an anti-venom. He's like, no, go kill this thing for me. It got me. Maybe he assumes that he's already dead. There she is, Sarkoth. Oh, you aggroed from really far. Really far away. Just a vicious little thing, aren't you? Could we go over the hillside there and, and end up back in town? We're... We're gonna find out. <laughs> Is that a back entrance to the town? Yeah, we're about to see. Ah, my father always said I would never amount to much, and here, lying beneath the tree as life seeps away, I'm afraid it looks like he was right. Uh, your father was a dick. At least I wish to die knowing that my last enemy in life lays dead. My blow was not enough to kill him, but looking at the damage I inflicted gives me some small measure of pride. That small measure will be all I have to sustain myself if I die, and in that light, the short list of my life's accomplishments fills me with anger. Seeing the deed you have done for me steals my heart. I cannot fall so easily. I must endure. But it remains that I cannot make the trek back to the den unassisted. Please return to the den and tell Gornak of my situation. Perhaps he can help me. Yeah, perhaps. At least he's up now. We probably could have carried him back and just like tossed him over the ridge here and down into the town. <laughs> we aggroed it again. Yeah, it looks like I've never known this. In 17 years, I have never known that you can come over here and you could drop down. I've always gone the long way back around, I swear. That's actually crazy. Look at that. You learn something new all the time. Sunk, sunk. From your description of the beast, I believe you must be speaking of Sarkoth. 
Uh, yeah, that's what the nameplate above its head said. It is no wonder that Hanazua was overtaken by it. Aid will be dispatched to him immediately. Trouble yourself no more with Hanazua's plight. However, I must say, I am most impressed to hear that you brought Sarkoth to death. It is a feat to be proud of. Go forth to victory. All right. What you want? Excellent. Your success shows you are prepared. All the elements earth of uh, all the elements earth represents the foundation of all things. It is your strength, your stamina, and your patience. Earth will protect you, but only if shown the proper respect. Isopta is a drink created to bind our spirits to the elements. Fused with magic, the potion will allow the strong will to see the elements as no one else can. Your spirit will be connected to the element the Sopta was created for, and only a select few shaman know the recipe. The Sopta is always drunk in a holy place and never anywhere else. Remember that. Alright, that's to go get our earth totem. You are a dependable troll. Can I count on you for another task? Some time ago, I was surveying the cave to the north for minerals, and I left my favorite pick behind. When I later returned to retrieve it, I found the cave was filled with vicious beasts. Will you go into the cave, the Burning Blade Coven, and get my pick? Go forth. It's left in a chamber with a waterfall. Yeah, we will definitely do that. It's really... It's crappy when you do the initial quest to go in there to get the medallion and then you come back and you remember you have to take this guy's quest and go back in there. I've done that before. This way we get to do it all at once. Uh, but first, we are going to empty our bags. Uh, so we're not wearing anything right now, so uh, anything's better than nothing. Alright, let's head to the north, we'll go into the cave, and we will get Thrazzle's pick and the Burning Blade Medallion. And after that, I... well, after that we'll go do our Call of Earth. We could do that first. Um, hmm. <laughs> we don't really need the totem right now, it's not really a huge deal whether we get it right now or not. But maybe we just ought to go get it out of the way. There is a secret passage up into the hills somewhere. Uh, somewhere being the operative word. Uh, maybe over here? No, maybe not. kind of thought it would be marked with like a torch usually they give little clues like that to help you find these passageways the hidden path well we have uh We've discovered it, whether or not we're anywhere actually near it enough to use it. Like, this is not the hidden path. This is a sheer wall face that we cannot climb up. But somewhere around here is the hidden path. Uh, maybe this is it right here. Yeah, here we go. So, that's where it's at if you're looking at the map. Mm, nope, we're gonna go this way.
Should be able to drink the sap to here. There we go. Not close enough. Ah, pleased is the earth to have you here. Bound together in body and spirit, you'll go forward knowing that the mountains are your strength, the plains your patience, and the world itself your essence. Standing before the earth humbly is all that is required of you to pass this rite. But the others are not so passive. They may be chaotic and often violent, but such is the nature of the elements. Dual natures opposing one another, you must come to learn these things intricately. Take this rough quartz from me and bring it to Kanaga Earthcaller as proof of our meeting. He will craft a totem for you, and this pebble will be the heart of it. As small as it may seem, you will come to find that size does not matter, and that even the smallest of things can outlast many others. Okay, we won't read into that too much. <laughs> we will, uh, we will move on. Surprised he doesn't have us uh, quell any raging elementals or fight anything. Yeah, I don't tend to drop Stone Skin Totem or anything every combat. Ooh, look at that. We can see Ratchet from here. It's actually like a really good shortcut. If for some reason you wanted to get over to Ratchet, which uh, we don't, so I'll try not to fall off the world there. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I tend to only throw a bunch of totems down if it's going to be a more difficult fight, or if I know I'm going to be kind of in the same area for a long time. But the way I play the Shaman, we, we just kind of act like a magical warrior. We don't use totems every single pull. And a lot of times we'll use reactive totems, like Earthbind Totem is a good one for runners. If we need a little AoE damage, we have we'll get Fire Burst Totem. You want. Excellent. The totem I will craft for you is more than a symbol of your status among shaman. It has abilities beyond that. One use of the totem is a focus for spells. Those spells are tied to the earth, and as you earn greater and greater wisdom, more of the earth's abilities will be made accessible to you. Alright. So we get stone skin totem. I think we're good there. I think we got it turned in. Quest window bugged out a little bit. And so we'll definitely put it out on our bar. But again, probably won't be something we drop every fight. Alright, now we can go get Thrazzle's pick and our Burning Blade Medallion. And after that, I think we're going to be done here. We'll be moving out of the Valley of Trials. And I think we'll be going to Senjin Village next, and uh, Razor Hill. And yeah, I think I, I'm going to have to kind of stay in Duratar and do most of our questing here, just because, you know, we're going to get our, our Fire Totem at level 10, our Water Totem at level 20. And if I take us somewhere like the Ghostlands, it's going to create a lot of unnecessary travel that's uh, simply going to slow us down. Also, I don't know that there is a Shaman Trainer in Undercity or Silvermoon. So, yeah. I think we'll just do, uh, do some stuff in Duratar. I don't think we've ever done a full run of Duratar before.
Uh, the shield has the same amount of armor that we currently have. Okay, now here is where we have to make sure we go the right way. I believe we can just go to the right, and that should give us access to the guy who has the medallion, and then we may be able to jump down and get to the waterfall where the pick is at. Pretty sure about this. I think one time I went to the left, cleared all the way left, and then had to come back. And clear to the right as well. That was a big resist there on the earth shock. Unfortunate that. I'm gonna clear this guy out. He seems like he could come behind us at any moment and just cause some problems for us. down here somewhere I believe I think we have to continue on around the corner here to get to the other guy so we'll continue around the corner and then we'll come back and we can jump down over here if we can't jump down over on the other side could probably jump down in either place Put the bracers on. We don't have any bracers at the moment. Alright, here we go. Yerog Bane Shadow. He's got our medallion. No corruption. Oh, he's gonna get it off on us. There we go. Alright, we stopped the immolate though. Okay, that's great. Can we jump down over here and get to the pick? It doesn't look like it. I think our best option is going to be to jump down on the other side where we can see it from. So let's go do that. Well, that was close. I'm actually surprised we did not pull this guy. Oh, now he's seen us.
Now we just need to pick the right direction to fight our way out of here. Um, yeah, I guess we need to go out and around. We could hearth out. Uh, my hearth is off cooldown. But we might as well fight our way out of here. I mean, these guys are pretty easy to defeat and it would be kill experience. Can never really underestimate the value of some solid kill experience. Especially in, in classic. Inventory is full. Yeah, that's a problem, though. I think in this playthrough for this shaman, maybe instead of going with a big two-hander, maybe we're going to focus on having really good one-handers and really good shields. Until we can dual wield. I think that's kind of the plan. I feel like once I went with a two-hander on our Draenei Shaman, we just started to get, like, beat in, like, every combat after a while. And I, I think we need to understand and enjoy the uh, power of the shield. And honestly, I love doing the, the one-hander and shield characters. They're, like, kind of my favorite characters. That's why I love the warrior so much. Anybody who's been watching that playthrough knows that a lot of the time I run around with a sword and shield on even though I have pretty amazing two-hand weapons, uh, it's just kind of the style of combat that I like. And of course, I like the added protection that it gives us. Because what I don't want is to have to heal after every fight. Unfortunately, sometimes what that means is when we do dungeons, we're going to be rolling on stuff that other people need too. So, I guess I should kind of prepare you guys for that pretty early on. Because uh, I plan to be healing most dungeons to help out the group. Uh, healers are kind of hard to find. You know, as much so as tanks can be hard to find. But we're going to be enhancement. Um, that's our build for leveling, so I'm going to have to roll on enhancement stuff when I'm healing. I feel like when you're at endgame, you primarily would want to stick to just rolling on gear that you are filling the roll for, but when you're leveling, you kind of need solo gear. It's really important, and that's why we're going to be going into dungeons, to get gear to help us out with leveling up. So don't be surprised when we're in a run and I roll on a DPS weapon, or I roll on a shield, because that, that stuff is definitely going to happen. I'll never roll on anything that I can't use. But we will need uh, leveling gear for our enhancement build. And we will be getting it from dungeons, so... Alright, we returned his favorite pick, and we did get level 6. Let's go visit our trainer. You retrieved it, well done. Your efforts within the Burning Blade Coven are key to rooting out this cult in the Valley of Trials, but I fear they may have further aims in our land. We have not seen the end of them. Ah, uh, we'll take the legs. Report to Senjin Village. Your trials against the Burning Blade are finished here in the valley, but I want you to report your findings. Go to the troll village of Senjin and seek out Master Gadrin. 
Sunjin Village is east, out the valley, and then right at the fork. Go and be swift. I fear the evil found in the Burning Blade Coven is but the herald of a larger threat. May your blades never dull. May your blades never dull. What can I do for you? Earthbind Totem, perfect. And a healing wave rank Strength. two. Let's just replace this. Earthbind Totem, I'm gonna put here. We'll probably use that uh, semi frequently to slow runners. Uh, nothing else though at this level. So yeah, we're out of the Valley of Trials. And we are gonna head over to Senjin Village. Some of the stuff in Senjin is a higher level. I feel like we may have to gravitate between there and Razor Hill. We'll see how it goes. I'd like to just finish Senjin Village and be done, but it may not work out that way. It's a little bit weird. I feel like the orc and, and troll area, it, starting area, is the only one that kind of splits you like this. I can't think of any other starting area where after you finish the introductory part, you have two different places to quest out of that are at the same level. I, I think Duratar may be unique in that. I'm racking my brain and I can't think of any other zone where that happens. Uh, humans go from Northshire to Elwynn. Like to the Greater Elwyn Forest. You could you could make an argument for well no, because when you get to Goldshire, the stuff that is in the logging camp, you're not at level to do that yet. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's kinda unique. Urkor here, the shortest orc ever created. Excuse me, can you help? I have a load of food here. I walked along the road and braved scorpions and spiders and worse. I brought the food to the Valley of Trials because I thought they needed it, and I'd like to help out. But they don't need any food. Now I have to take it back to Razor Hill, and I'm afraid of all the beasts along the way. May your blades never oh, Robert, you did not sell your stuff, my man. Oh, those... It's nice to get a pant upgrade and go from, like, having pants on to having torn up shorts on. It's quite an upgrade. Go forth to victory. Okay, here's the question. We could go to Razor Hill first. We're, we're gonna we're gonna go to Sengen Village first. Yeah, we'll hold on to that. Alright, we've got quests. Let's go talk to this guy lurking over here by the rocks. Laurel Prowltusk. Lower your voice, Shaman. The Kolkar Centaurs lie just over the ridge to the west in Kolkar Crag. Uh, that's pretty far, man. I don't think they can hear us from here. Oh, we're in combat with a scorpion, though. That's cool. We'll, uh, come back to this guy after we deal with the scorpion. Oh, we've got a guard helping out. There we go. Perfect. Greetings, man. Last night, while they were raiding, I snuck into their village and discovered that the Dirty Beast have a three-tiered attack planned on the trolls and orcs of Duratar. We mustn't let their invasion come to fruition. Perhaps you can muster the might needed to infiltrate Kolkar Crag and destroy their attack plans. Last I saw, they had divided them up amongst three of their leaders. Stay away from the voodoo. I will stay away from the voodoo, yep. Don't want to get hooked on the voodoo, kids. Let's turn in the breadcrumb here to Master Gadron. Hmm, your report comes at a bad time. The Burning Blade is not seen here in Senjin, but their evil has taken seed off the coast on Echo Isle. See, I like the trolls before they worked in all the faux Jamaican accents. Like, accents that aren't even actually anything. It's just like their derogatory interpretation of what an accent is. I like reading the troll stuff when that isn't present. I really appreciate just the straight dialogue. 
uh, without trying to work in the accents. The orcs are friends of the Darkspear Trolls, honorable friends. We want to help the orcs, but we need help too. Uh, Machina's Skull. I hear the voice of my brother Machina calling me in my dreams. He was taken by Zalazane, the warlock on Echo Isles to the east, and he is dead. But death is not freedom for my brother. Machina's spirit was trapped within his own skull by Zalazane's magics. In my dream, I see it with other skulls in a circle of power on the largest Echo Isle. Okay, that'll probably be a while before we get to that. Zalazane, same thing. This will be one of the last things we do here. Uh, the Witch Doctor Zalazane dwells on the Echo Isles to the east. They are the isles we once called home. From there, he sends his trolls to the mainland to hex our people and drag more of them under his sway. He must be stopped. Defeat Zalazane and his minions, former Darkspear trolls now lost to us. Bring me his head and I will know his reign of evil is over. And report to Orgnil. Uh, this is going to be Razor Hill breadcrumb. Okay. Master Vol Volnar here has a solvent spirit. Although my eyes fail me, I can still see clearly enough. More often, I must rely on my alchemical skills to aid me in magics that once came easily. But I refuse to take on an apprentice. No troll or orc worthy enough has ever come forward. Are you worthy? Yes, of course you are. Of course you think you are. I need a few things. Will you get them for me? I need intact Makura eyes and vials of crawler mucus. Okay. And who else? You. Velrin Fang. Many of the hides we use come from Duratar tigers. Blankets, armor, tents. There are a great many reasons we hunt the beast, and many reasons we let them thrive at the same time. The time has come for us to cull the flock, so to speak. Our numbers grow and our needs are beginning to overwhelm our stocks. I need more hides if I'm to prepare suitable goods for our people. Look at that, we took every quest in a troll village, and I didn't have to ignore or read a silly accent a single time. And that's how the troll dialogue should be written. Uh, okay, so, Crawler Mucus, Makura Eyes, and then after that we can uh, see about getting the attack plans maybe. Should also probably decide what I want to do with my professions because pretty soon we're going to be fighting stuff here that I could be skinning if I wanted to skin. Uh, there are no trainers just conveniently located anywhere apparently. So that might be something we have to pick up in Orgrimmar. Uh, which maybe I should do. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, I think before I go get the tigers and really make any headway onto the Echo Isles, I should probably learn skinning. It's going to be a bit of an annoying run to get up to Ogremar right now, but it's probably going to be worth it if I want to do that. Uh, we don't have Rockbiter weapon on. That's explaining some of our damage not being good. Robert, you didn't sell. I know. I didn't sell. Big surprise, right? We also aren't getting bags. We didn't get a single bag to drop, which is pretty unlucky. Uh, we also don't have the money to buy any bags, but we are going to have to run back and sell really quick. I feel like that's a big discrepancy too, like some starting villages have a few professions where you can train and other places like this have nothing for us at all. Uh, we could track some other things here, we could track repairs, no repairs here, oh yeah there is a repair guy, okay, well that's good. 
At least there's a repair vendor. Even if there aren't any trainers for anything useful. They talked about needing hides to make stuff you'd think they'd have a skinner and a leather worker about, but uh, apparently they don't. Uh, we have three silver, which is not enough to buy a single bag, so yeah, pretty sad. There's still a chance that we'll get one to drop, but usually if you're going to get a bag drop, it happens in the very starting area. Pretty bad drop rate here for uh, just some simple, simple crawler mucus. Don't need scorpions. Hey, there we go. That's two out of eight. Right now we have enough regen that we can get away with two lightning bolts and an earth shock and we're not running out of mana yet. How long that will keep up I don't really know. Probably not very long. Uh, let's see, if we want the Makuras we need to go a little bit further up the coast I think so let's head that way and we'll fight whatever crawlers we happen to come across. Though most of them seem to be down to the south behind us. Those of you who have played shamans extensively in Classic and TPC Classic, how do you feel about like elemental versus enhancement? Follow up question to that. How much like meleeing do you end up doing still as elemental or do you just try to stay at range and blast everything before it gets to you? Or is there time like this when you throw out a couple lightning bolts and a shock and then you just kind of beat it down?
I'll probably read some guides too, and uh, just do, some, do a little research on how the different specs feel and play. Obviously, I'm drawn naturally to enhancement. I just like being in melee with stuff. But I, I'd like to understand how elemental plays as well. Okay, that's cool. That's all of the uh, mucus that we need. Now we need these guys. Makura shell hides. Creepy looking things, if you ask me. Yeah, these things really creep me out. They're like upright crustacean humanoid things, and for some reason that like... It reaches for some horrifying thing back deep in my mind. Some like ancient fear of stuff crawling out of the sea. Some like an unknown creature from the sea, basically. It's like some Lovecraftian stuff that uh, I feel like I experience when I come against these guys. It's creepier later when they're bigger. There are some in Feralis, I think, that I fought once that were like much larger than this, and they, yeah, they just get creepier and creepier the bigger they get, man. Three out of four. Uh, let's see. I don't really see any others right in this general area. Maybe if we swim out a little bit and take a look in the water. Oh yeah, there we go. There's one. And that's four out of four. follow-up from him. Let's go out to the centaur camp. And, uh, we'll do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I thought we'd have a quest for these scorpions. But we haven't got one yet, so I mean, maybe it comes available at level 7. I don't know.
Oh, you aggroed from like really far away. Uh, I've aggroed two things. I don't really want to fight a scorpion and a centaur. So... We're gonna try to just run away, man. See if that works. Okay, we did get away. Let's give ourselves a little heal. That takes a third of our mana. Perfect. Okay, big resist. He runs at like 20% health. That's going to be quite annoying. We need to drink our mana back and maybe eat some food here too to get our health back. Someone's been through here recently, probably the troll we saw walking out because uh, this tent has been cleared already. Luckily the attack plans are still here. getting a little crowded here with the respawns. Yeah, I'm glad we moved out of there. Now if we can just stop this guy from, yeah, running right at them, that's great. Okay, level 7. It's a good time to level up. I hope that will help us fight these guys a little bit more efficiently. At this point, though, we're probably really just waiting for level 8 to get another level of uh, Earth Shock, another level of Lightning Bolt, just to get those spells to be a little bit more powerful. Okay. Okay, here's the second set of attack plans. Don't really know why we just destroy them. Why wouldn't we bring them back so that we can show everybody what the attack plan is so we can counter it? You have to imagine, like, they made the attack plan initially, so destroying the plans still leaves that possibility that they still kind of reformulate the plan. I feel like you would just make a copy of the plan, leave the plans, bring them back uh, to the powers that be so that you can be better prepared to handle the attack that's going to come. I don't know that where there's a world where, like, you go destroy their attack plans and then they, they give up. They're like, oh, well, we were totally going to attack you guys, but uh, since you destroyed the attack plans, I, I guess we aren't going to attack at all. Yeah, we'll just hang out here, you know. I mean, what can we do? No attack plans. We'll draw some more up, I guess, but then another adventure just comes along, burns them again. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense when you think about it, but probably not supposed to think about it that much.
He put a cloud of dust on us, which I don't know if it has an effect. There's no effect listed here. Which is pretty weird. Alright, let's get back and we'll turn this one in. And it's possible that we, we may go up to Razor Hill for a bit before we do Zelzane. I don't know, Zelzane's stuff is level 10. Uh, it's going to be a minute before we even hit level 8, so that may be something we have to come back for. Yeah, there's level 5 stuff up there. I feel like we got to get up there. A flight point between Senjin and Razor Hill would be nice. Talk to me. The Horde would surely prevail if the Kolkar Centaurs were to attack, but by preventing such an attack, we have spared our mighty warriors unnecessary bloodshed. And as sure as there is sand and tanneris, we know that there will be blood spilt before these trying times are through. You have served your people well, shaman. Ah, uh, we'll take the cloak. It's a little bit more armor than what we have on. Okay, yeah, nothing else new popped up here, so... We're gonna run up to Razor Hill. get ourselves bound to an inn over here too at least and then eventually after today's recording I will run us up to Ogremar and I think we're just gonna learn leatherworking and skinning I know right I'm really bad about taking time to actually level up crafting professions, like I'm pretty good about doing things like skinning and gathering, but when it comes to actually leveling up the crafting profession, I'm really bad at making time to do it. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to make a habit of doing the professions at the end of the episode. So like right at the end, you know, that way people who are interested and watching the crafting level up can stick around and people who are not interested can, you know, they're forewarned. You know when we're going to do it so you can kind of bail out a little early. And that would help me a lot to actually, if I made it a part of the episode, that would help me to actually like do it and get it done. Because what happens is I, I tell myself, yeah, I'll get on there later and I'll, I'll click on some things, level up the leatherworking and then I don't have time to do it. I don't make the time to do it because a lot of times I don't have the time uh, carved out later on. So. So yeah, I'll try to do that. That, that could be something that works. Because it would be helpful to keep the leatherworking leveled up, especially if we want to kind of have two sets of gear. The problem with carrying two sets of gear is obviously inventory space is going to be a huge issue unless we get really lucky, get some bags to drop, or we just are going to have to spend a bunch of money. Our warrior has a little bit of money. It's not going to hurt me too much to buy some like decent bags for this character. I'll have to check and see like what 12 or 16 slot bags cost, and maybe we just kit this character out early on. It's kind of the advantage of having a higher level character with some gold, so that we can do stuff like that. Yes, you have something to report? Well then, let's have it. We cannot allow the Burning Blade a foothold in Duratar. We must destroy them before their evil festers. I have undergone my own investigations and found that a Burning Blade Warlock, the Goblin Fizzled Darkstorm, has camped within Thunder Ridge to the northwest. There he and his cultist minions spread chaos. Find and defeat Fizzle and bring me his dead claw. For the Horde! For the Horde. Uh, okay, sure. We might as well just take all of these, there's no reason not to. Sub -sub. Ah, Vanquish the Betrayers. Led by, the Prou Ad led by Admiral Proudmoor, the humans of Kul Tiras encroached on Durator, violating the War Chief's pact made with Jaina Proudmoor in order to defeat Archimonde years ago. The human aggression was repelled and Tiragard Keep fell. 
But recently, the Admiral's reserves, led by Lieutenant Benedict, have retaken the keep and once again posed a threat to our homeland. These humans show no respect for diplomacy. Prove your honor and travel south to Tearguard Keep and eliminate the human invaders. It's interesting, like, how quickly, as an adventurer, we do get just wrapped up in political and uh, military stuff. Because we're not part of the Horde military, we're just an adventurer, but we do get wrapped up in the military endeavors, like, right away. When we arrived, the Razormane Quillbores possessed much of the land and proved a thorn in our sides. Is that... Is that a razor mane quill bore joke? A thorn in our sides? <laughs> Through our efforts, we have driven out the largest part of their numbers, but they still remain well fortified in some areas. It has gone on long enough, however. For our own protection, we cannot allow the razor mane any hold in our lands. Their camps can be found to the west of here. Look for the brambles and you will find them. Today we drive them from Duratar, tomorrow perhaps from all of Kalimdor. Go forth to victory. First and foremost, let's go ahead and make this in our home so I don't forget to do that. Secondly, let's go ahead and sell some stuff before I forget to do that as well. Okay, and we'll turn in the breadcrumb. Uh, we'll take the water. For the horde. You want us to bring you three tail lasher eggs? May your blades never die. It's your basic cooking quest. And then I think we need to get up to the tower up here. I think we could do that right here. Age has rendered me useless in battle. I don't know, dude. You still look pretty swell. Now I make myself useful in other ways. From this vantage point, I watch for invaders. As our strength here grows, I find myself blowing the signal horn less and less. To pass the time, I fashion goods to help younger, more able warriors defend our homeland. For you, you I can fashion you a bag for your belongings. Yeah, we definitely need a bag, man. You're the best. Yeah, you do know exactly what we need. If you want to knit us a little bag, that'd be great. Alright, looking at the levels of stuff, uh, most of the stuff that we picked up here is going to be a bit of a higher level. Cannabis Scraps and the Kulatiris Kill Quest is at level 7, we could definitely do that. Uh, even the Tigers down here are level 8. Uh, I think, though, this is going to be a good time to take a little bit of a break. I think that's what we'll do. We'll take a break. I want to get us up to Ogremar and learn skinning and leatherworking. Just get that taken care of. And when we pick up next time, we're going to do the tier guard keep stuff first. We'll get all that done. Should be pretty easy. Uh, after that, we'll want to head back down to the south where we can do the Dirtar Tigers. We'll be able to skin them at that point. And we'll get the Tail Lasher eggs, and uh, I don't know if we'll be ready to take on Zalazane. I think if we get to level 8, um, then we're just going to go for it. That way we don't have to keep running back and forth between Senjin Village and Razor Hill. I would like to just take care of the Senjin Village stuff next time we're down there. So that will be the plan, guys. Let me know what you think so far. I would very much love to hear from you. And thank you for being here and for the support. A special thank you to those of you who are members on the YouTube channel or with me on Patreon. 
it is that kind of direct support that's going to allow me to keep doing what I do long into the future, I hope. So thank you so much to those that do. Everybody take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we'll see you back here again really soon. Bye now.